morning brothers and sisters in Christ let's prepare our hearts to come and serve and worship the Lord just spend some time in quietness before the Lord The word of the Lord says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts spring to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Father, this morning we thank you. We are reminded again, Lord, of your great sacrifice and resurrection on the cross for each and every one of us. We are reminded, Lord, of your great love for us, your faithful, unswerving love for us, O oh Father God. We thank you. And Lord, this morning as we gather, Lord, we also confess that we are sinners, but for the grace and mercy of Christ, we can never come before you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, this morning, Lord, let your peace dwell within our hearts. Let healing come from above for each and every one of us in the different areas, in our different stations in life. We need you. We surrender ourselves into your loving hands. May this worship, this service continue to bring honour and please us you. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Let us stand for the call to worship. I lift my eyes to the mountains. My help comes from the Lord. Let's pray together. O maker of heaven and earth, Father in heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, your name is great. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for breathing life into us. Thank you, Lord, for this morning that we can come and worship you in this manner. Worship and praise be acceptable to you, dear Lord. Amen. Let us join together with all creation to praise our precious Lord.
please be seated. Let us read the prayer of illumination in unison and wholeheartedly. Lord, help us as we listen to your words. Help us to overcome and live the way of life you have ordained for us. Reading from Psalm 1 to 1. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the noon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you, over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Let us stand as we continue to prepare our hearts to sing the hymn of preparation. be seated. Good morning. How are you? Very good. <laughs> okay, that's good. Right, in the days of old, I think uh, people will greet each other because of their long journeys. It says, you know, how is your journey right they will greet each other with that greeting so i would also want to greet you the same how is your journey how is your journey with god let us go in into prayer yeah father in heaven indeed we thank you for this glorious morning that we can come into your presence. It is indeed a tremendous privilege 
a tremendous privilege to be called your sons and daughters, to be your children, only because of what Jesus Christ has done. We dare not forget that. We are reminded of that every moment. Lord, help us come back to you. Help us shift our focus back to you as we journey towards you today. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today we will be looking at uh, uh, a series, in, in fact, in uh, October and November, we have a series of uh, Psalms. And uh, this series of Psalms are called Psalms of Ascent. Psalms of Ascent. But, uh, or Songs of Ascent. Yeah, but what, what are they, actually? Now these are uh, collections of Psalms or songs. Uh, they are Psalm 120, they are found in uh, Psalm 120 to 134. 120 to 134. Uh, that is uh, how many songs? <laughs> Early in the morning. Uh. It's about 15. Uh. Uh, 15, uh, 120 to 134, 15. Okay, so four of these psalms are attributed to King David. King David uh, wrote them. Psalm, what? psalm 122, you don't need to write, lah. this is for your information. 122, 124, 131, and 133. Four psalms attributed to David. Then one is attributed to King Solomon, Psalm 127. 1 to 7. And the other 10 are anonymous, meaning no one knows who wrote them. They are also known as songs of pilgrims. Pilgrims. But uh, why are they called Psalms of Ascent? They are called Psalms of Ascent because they were traditionally sang during the ascent to Jerusalem. It tells you something, right? So Jerusalem, you have to ascend to Jerusalem. So I did my research. Uh, Jerusalem sits on a high land. I have not been to Jerusalem, unlike some of you. I think some of you may have visited the Holy Land. Um, Jerusalem sits on a on a high land. Now it's 754 meters, according to the internet. Uh, 2,474 feet to be exact. So it's quite high. Huh? Uh, to give us a perspective, huh? do you know how high Penang Hill is? <laughs> okay, interestingly, Penang Hill sits at uh, the highest point is 833 meters. Uh, Jerusalem sits at 754, so Penang Hill is a little bit higher, like the highest point. Lah. So just imagine, you can imagine, right, going up to Jerusalem is something like going up Penang Hill. Lah. <laughs> uh, but of course there are undulating highlands in the peripher periphery area as well. So coming to Jerusalem practically means one has to ascend, to go journey on a journey upwards. Now, if one uh, is to walk from different parts of Israel, it will usually take a few days. Now, then you might ask, why do the Israelites take this journey? Well, they go to Jerusalem for appointed feasts each year. And uh, what are these feasts? Well, if you read your Bible, then this feast is listed in Deuteronomy 16.16. 16. Deuteronomy 16.16 16 states, Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord, your God, at the place he will choose. At the feast of the unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, 
and the Feast of Tabernacles. So three uh, different feasts. Now I won't go into details of the, uh, there's a, another sermon altogether. <laughs> okay. Uh, so no man should appear before the Lord empty-handed. So for today we just know that there are three feasts that these Israelites needs to go up to, uh, go up to Jerusalem for. Now, so some scholars say that uh, these 15 psalms were chanted on their way up to Solomon's temple. Now, you must remember these psalms was written way before, right? So, uh, it may have been that way. So, as there were apparently 15 steps going up to the temple. Okay? Now, others believe that the psalms were sang on the way to Jerusalem as they ascended the city. Well, today, uh, interestingly, the Jews still sing this on their way up to Jerusalem. They sing these psalms. I found one in uh, YouTube. <laughs> they sang it in a bus on the way up to Jerusalem. So, in Hebrew. Huh? Now, these psalms are sung over the years in different tunes. In different tunes, although the lyrics are the same. You can hear them uh, over the YouTube if you are interested. Now, do, so just a little bit of background to what these psalms are, because we will be speaking throughout uh, this uh, one or two months. Yeah? I hope this gives us a better understanding uh, of what these psalms are all about. Now, songs are part of our worship, but it is not everything about worship. Eh? We praise God, it is part of our worship. Songs in their tunes and lyrics touches the soul. We all know that. We all know that. Our emotions and resolve are affected by songs. The whole industry understands this. Many of our songs today sings about love. Many songs also sings about sadness of our hearts. Now there are songs that we sometimes don't care what the lyrics say, but just move to the tunes. But if you notice, the world's songs move us to be happy, sad, or just simply move our bodies to dance. That's about it. It focuses very much on our emotions. But today, today's songs, the songs of ascent, however, focuses on our soul and the condition of our soul. It starts with self, but the orientation soon focuses on God. If you notice, this is usually the case for psalms. A lot of the psalms starts off with the psalmist's situation. How much pain and injustice the psalmists have endured and pray for God to intervene and help them. Isn't that the case for us today as well? We are all on a journey to the spiritual Jerusalem. We are all walking towards the presence of God. That was what the temple symbolizes when you go up, the presence of God. And while the Jewish pilgrims walk towards the temple, he or she contemplates his or her situation in relations with God. On our way here to church this morning, do we contemplate our own situation in relations to God? I'm sure many of us do. I know I do. What situation are you in right now in your own journey towards God? Are you sad because things are not going your way? Are you happy because things are indeed going your way? Are you in anger because you are hurt 
and struggling with unforgiveness? Are you a bit lost and feeling uncertain about what the immediate future may bring? Are you feeling fearful and insecure? Are you feeling tired, very tired, and feeling unappreciated? Are you gripped with fear for what you are going through right now? Are you feeling hopeless since no one out there can help you? Are you feeling hopeless because you have prayed over your situation and relief has not yet come? What is your situation? What is your direction? Are you still heading towards Jerusalem? Presence of God? Or have you stopped on your journey? Or contemplating to stop your journey? Or slowing down for that matter? Or are you even contemplating to turn around from Jerusalem? Because the journey has become hard. Turn around and start walking away from God because of your current situation? Well, I don't really know your situation. God knows, but you are here. You are here and this message is for you and also for me. Now, in my own journey, I had to go through some of these valleys as well. They have to traverse valleys to go up. Just to share uh, a little bit yeah, of my own journey, uh, where, uh, you know, where, where you are, if there is valleys, uh, the only thing that you, saw, you will see are walls, you know, walls of dirt. In, in fact, I went into YouTube and, and traced some of these uh, people who are, who are walking on these roads. Yeah, they're just walls of dirt, barrenness. Now, for me, it was uh, tiring uh, when I was in these valleys in my journey, trying to walk up and out. So just one of these uh, struggles, uh, one of the many struggles uh, that uh, I go through was coming into full-time ministry work, actually. Now I had to go through uh, these struggles of not knowing whether I can actually adequately provide for my family. It was a real struggle. It was a real struggle. Now, when I resigned from my career in 2012, I was excited as I finally was able to answer God's calling to the ministry, you know, full-time work in a church. Uh, but reality soon hit. Reality soon hit uh, when we were on a negative trajectory on our monthly expenses. Uh, mind you, when I was in uh, uh, seminary, I was not having any income for three years. Right? So yes, Penang Wesley uh, was gracious uh, to help me out by giving me an allowance, uh, which I wouldn't be able to make it uh, without it. Yeah. So I thank you, Penang Wesley. Now I had to learn very quickly to depend on God. Very quickly. But it wasn't that simple. The struggle was real. Seeing your bank account balance going down so fast is unnerving. <laughs> I have three children and one was just entering college. Now I was in this situation, as mentioned, for about three years. Now the thought of quitting uh, was real in the second year. Now uh, you can tolerate a month, two months, three months, but when it goes into years, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, the emotions are quite overwhelming. And uh, not only that, there were pressures mounting. 
uh, as I was already so late in my age before going to seminary, uh, I thought I could still do so much assignment, but wow, <laughs> it's tough. So there was uh, uh, assignments mounting, the pressures of this also mounting, uh, having to provide. But looking back, uh, I think God had to put me through that. Lah had to put me through that. I had to go through the emotions, the pressures, the struggles of overcoming them with faith in God, who said that He will provide. And He did. Now, through it all, I had a better appreciation of what it was like of not having enough to rely on. So this is one of my favorite psalms, you know, actually. Where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? Does it come from my savings? I thank God that He had seen me through that period. But He had the journey, it's not over. How about you? I'm sure you will have your own unique testimony of overcoming with the help from God. But if you are here today and feeling lost, feeling down, feeling hopeless, let this psalm of old encourage you and me once more. We will now look at the psalm verse by verse. Verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? The psalmist asks as he journeys towards God's temple in Jerusalem. How about us, brothers and sisters? Where, where do you lift up? Where do you lift your eyes to when you need help in our own journey? Do we lift our eyes towards our intellect the way we can get help from people maybe relying on our intellect uh, it's not it's not bad lah, huh? it's not really that bad but it may not be the best again do we lift our eyes to the capability to the capabilities of men, to capable men and women to help us. It is more immediate. Well, capable men and women can surely help. But we really have to learn to go to God first. As I too had to go through. Would we then remind ourselves like the psalmist did? Would we ask ourselves with the same question? The, uh, the psalmist was asking himself the same question. You know. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? The psalmist looked up. Perhaps he was tired you know, of his journey going up to Jerusalem. Perhaps at the same time, the psalmist was contemplating his own life's situation and was talking to himself. Do you talk to yourself? Sometimes. I do. <laughs> Sometimes we are really tired. It can come to a point of hopelessness as well. We actually talk to ourselves in a negative way when that happens. You know, no one can help me. Lah. Not even God. You know, I've prayed for so long. Yet help and relief has not come. Maybe we should pause and ask ourselves again what the psalmist asks. Where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? And then, of course, the psalmist reminded himself of this truth. My help comes from the Lord. 
My help comes from the Lord, verse 2. Why? Because he's the maker of heaven and earth. The psalmist have to remind himself who God is. The psalmist has to reaffirm who is helping him. Maybe he was traveling at night, I don't know. And he looked up and then he sees the stars. He looked down, he saw the earth. Maybe that reminded him who is the maker of heaven and earth. The helper is the Lord, the owner, the creator, the maker of heaven and earth. Sometimes I struggle too. I can't phantom. I look up to the skies and I'm reminded that there are billions of galaxies. You know how... It, it, it blows my mind. It's billions of galaxies. You heard right. It's not billions of stars, okay? It's billions of galaxies. Scientists with the upgraded Hubble telescope back in 2003 and 4 discovered thousands upon thousands of galaxies. And the detection went on from there and they estimated that there are billions of galaxies out there. What are galaxies? Galaxies are sprawling system of dusks gas, dark matter, and anywhere from a million to a trillion stars. One star is like our sun. <laughs> that is only one galaxy. And they are held together by gravity. So reads the National Geographic's website on the subject. It is very difficult to phantom a being who created the whole universe. So it is good sometimes to remind ourselves how big our God is. And yet, He does, he does not remain aloof like what we think. He does not remain reserved like what we think. Uh, he doesn't remain distant although we cannot see Him. Unfriendly, detached, no, God does not just hide himself. You must remember to Adam and Eve, he was there with them. To Abraham, he came to see him. To the Israelites, he parted the sea for them. And to the world, Jesus came to die on the cross for our sin. The maker of heaven and earth loves you and I. Where does your help come from? Verse 3 and 4, He will not let your foot slip. He, will, he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. To the psalmist, when he walks up towards Jerusalem, the track is rugged and treacherous. He could slip and fall in those narrow, narrow tracks. But he sings about God who watches over him. The psalmist says, the God who keeps him will not sleep. God is always awake, always keeping a watch on you and I. For some, this is really reassuring. Reassuring. The psalmist knows this from history. He reminded himself and then he quotes history. God saves Israel again and again. He says, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, verse 4 says, He who watches over Israel will neither slumber or sleep. He quotes history. And the psalmist is confident that this is the same God he is worshipping. We are worshipping the same God, brothers and sisters in Christ. 
Yahweh, the Lord who saves, will neither slumber nor sleep. He watches over you and I. He keeps you and I. He preserves you and I. Verse 5 and 6. These next verses are interesting. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Huh? Have you read this verse? I did and I, I wondered. <laughs> we can understand that the sun can harm you, right? You, you stand there for long, long enough, you know that uh, we can get sunstroke. People do die from it. But how does the moon hurt us? Ah? Uh, make you into a lunatic? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but a closer look into this type of writing. This is a writing style or a genre. Huh? Uh, so it tells us that the Hebrew expression of the sun and the moon are actually symbolic for night and day. Right? They are symbolic. So it, it means all the time. It means all the time. But it's flowery language. It's flowery language. The Lord watches over you. He protects you in the day and in the night. The Lord keeps you, protects you all the time. Verse 7 and 8. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Now how do we make sense of these two verses? The Lord will keep you from all harm. Really? But yet we experience harm, isn't it? Is this verse wrong? Is the psalmist an idealist? How would Paul in prison, Paul, huh? Paul the apostle, in prison make sense of this verse? He, he had the Old Testament with him. How would Jesus make sense of this verse? while dying on the cross. How would a wounded Christian in Syria make sense of this verse in the middle of war? How would a Christian family member of a person who passed on due to any sickness make sense of this verse? How do you and I make sense of this verse? when we are hurting. Think about that. Sometimes when we think about, uh, when we are on this journey and when we look at all this ideal type of verses, uh, it challenges us. But truly, you, you and I have to face it, right? The thing is that He keeps us from all harm. At the end, is the final harm. The final harm to our souls. That is the truth. Not only keep us from hurts or harms or being wounded, or even death by itself. But at the end of it is our soul's harm. The harm that will come to our soul. The second death. The Lord will watch over you, over your soul, over your coming and going both now and forevermore. We have to come to terms with that. Help comes from the Lord. 
The Lord will keep you from slipping and falling. The Lord will keep you from harm. Now you know how to uh, navigate that. The Lord will keep you from harm all the time. That is the summary of it. How do I know that? Because the Lord is the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. How do I know that? Because this Lord has done the same for Israel. This is what the psalmist reminds himself. It's a deep theological reminder. I hope we will ponder on these verses of His grace and His truth as well and have a new perspective of who God is, the God who helps us all the time. Let us pray. Father, indeed, we lift up our eyes to the mountains and ask ourselves, where does our help come from? Today we are reminded that our help comes from you, O Lord, the maker of heaven and of earth, the one who keeps Israel, and the same one who will keep our soul and our faith. And indeed, to the one who can keep us from falling, all glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us, let us continue to pray. Heavenly Father, it is you who have drawn us into this house this morning. We acknowledge you, Lord God, of our lives. And we thank you indeed, Lord, for having watched over all of us. Thank you for putting your word in our hearts. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who prompts us when we are on the wrong path and for directing us into your paths of righteousness. Thank you, Father, for hearing our many prayers and for teaching us to pray. And best of all, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is interceding for us. Father, with these assurances, we, your children, look to you continually for we need your mercies and grace. We join our hearts to pray for our broken and troubled world. Broken by our greed, broken by sickness, broken by divisions. Lord, we look to you and we pray O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. And Father, we continue to pray for our beloved nation, Malaysia. Would you have mercy upon us? We pray for all who are responsible for good administration of our country. Would you mercifully direct their hearts, God? and help them to remember the interests of the Rakyat. Would you mercifully, Lord, direct their hearts, prevail over them, and enable them, Lord, to do all that is needful, that this nation is governed well. Would you mercifully, Lord, have your way amongst them, and deliver them, Lord, from greed, selfish agenda, and enable them, Lord, 
to govern the nation well. Heavenly Father, we pray for our frontliners in this pandemic when the infections rises. As we have called out to you, as we have lifted our eyes to you and cried to you, our help, the one who makes heaven and earth, we pray, Lord, that you mercifully watch over each and every frontliner members. Please, Lord, strengthen them and protect them. Please, Father, if you would, keep them safe. Help them, Lord, be diligent in doing all that is needed so that, God, they may be safe. We pray this for their families too. And dear Lord, we pray for those who are sick. Have mercy, Lord, upon them. If you would, Father, grant them your healing. We continue to pray for our teachers in so many schools who now revert to online education. Father, we you know that it is very challenging. There are so many, many challenges that they are faced to try to teach well, to try to engage the students' attention. We are not ready on many fronts. We lift our, we lift our eyes to you, maker of heaven and earth, from where our help comes from. Please help our teachers. Please help our children and our students in school. In these unlikely and uncertain times, may we see your gracious interventions, God, that our children may still learn and learn well. Indeed, Father, to you our eyes are lifted. May you continue to help us walk in your way trusting you in good times in bad times we pray that our turning our eyes to you bears witness unto you that your will be done and your name be glorified thank you father for our recently concluded leaders meeting and planning yesterday we lift at your feet all that you have enabled us to see and all that you revealed to us to do. We continue to look to you and pray for your enabling and grace that as leaders of this community of faith, we will strive as you enable us to walk in your ways, that you may always find our community of leaders worthy servants of yours loving servants unto this community of faith. Please hear this, our prayer, as we commit ourselves continually to you. We remember our elderly ones in our community of faith and pray, Father, that you graciously place your hands upon them to strengthen them, to keep them safe, to comfort them, and in this unlikely season, may their faith in you be deepened and renewed. Please hear this, our prayer. We pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, would you please stand with me? We affirm our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith, saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to worship the Lord by bringing to the Lord our offerings. Would you please join me to pray the offertory prayer? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for providing for our needs. May our offering bring blessings to our neighbors who are in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. Let me encourage you to continue to be in a prayerful disposition as the ushers guide us forward to bring our offerings to him.
please rise and we sing to the Lord the doxology. <coughs> brothers and sisters, and if you give me a few minutes to highlight some of the parish news for our attention. First and foremost, we want to welcome each and every one of you to this uh, service unto the Lord at 9 a.m. If you are here for the first time, please let me extend a warm welcome to you. Please continue to keep safe and keep well. We are constantly reminded that we are now living according to the new norms. Yeah? The day will come when we find it so strange that we are not wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah, but to me personally, when I see this, you know, that we are reminded to wash our hands frequently, that we need to upkeep our personal hygiene, it is a good reminder for us that we cannot take our lives for granted, isn't it? That we are constantly reminded that it is our responsibility, our personal well-being and health, that as we do so, we are also taking care of other people. Yeah, so let us be reminded uh, to keep up with the observation of the SOP that we are going to see more and more the new norms by which we live with. Yeah, and as people of God, as the Word of God reminds us this morning, our help comes from the Lord. We don't take our lives for granted. We rely on the Lord and we pray for one another. We want to thank Brother William for the ministry of the Word this morning. I want to thank God, and I'm, I'm, and I'm quite sure that the leaders of the church join me to thank God for a, for, a, for a beautiful, that's the word I thought about, a beautiful gathering of our leaders over the weekend for a time of fellowship, a time of prayer, and a time of humble seeking seeking the Lord to show us where the Lord is pointing us to, yeah, in our lives, personal lives, in the life of our community of leaders, and in turn, the life of our community of faith, Penang Wesley Methodist Church. So we pray that I covered your prayers continually for our leaders, that the Lord may continually place their hands upon them, that they will be the worthy servants the Lord will mightily use to lead us in God's purpose, that Penang Wesley, the very first Methodist Church of Malaysia, will continue to be a faithful beacon of hope and light unto Malaysia. Amen, brothers and sisters. Um, the Methodist women, they have completed their studies on uh, the women in the Bible, so they are coming together for a celebration, and that is on the 24th of October at 2 30, yeah. So for all of you participants and uh, MW members, you are welcome to join in the celebration. It doesn't say here if you have only attended once or twice whether you can come. Can come? Uh, don't know yet. Okay. So I suggest that you check with Evelyn. Okay. Right. So um, the other announcements, I do want to leave them to your reading and your prayerful participation. Remember to keep one another in prayer. Yeah. May we stand together. We sing to the Lord our closing song, God Send His Son.
Let us pray. Lord, we lift up our eyes to you, whose eyes are never turned away from us. We lift up our eyes to you, you who are the fountain of all the blessings we need. We lift up our eyes to you, Lord, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And we fear not, and we are assured that God, you are Emmanuel. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to look to him, the Lord who bless us and keep us, the Lord who makes his shine, face to shine upon us and be gracious to us, the Lord who lifts up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. Amen.